Next, I'm going to make the handle or knob. So, I'm going to go over here and choose the ellipse tool. Make sure I have a line edges checked again. And I'm just going to draw it for reference right in the middle here and just sort of eye it up. You could turn on smart guides or whatever if you wanted to. Um, I just don't have them on. So, 45 pixels. Square sounds pretty good. I'm going to name that knob base. I'm going to apply some style to that. Give it a gradient overlay. I'm going to base this on the same gradient values that I used for that background. So the brightness of my top color is going to be the lighter color, 15. And the brightness of my bottom color going to be five. I'm going to add a little inner shadow to it again using the inner shadow as a highlight rather than an inner shadow. So set it to white, blend mode to normal, 90 degrees, distance one, size zero. If you've watched a lot of my tutorials you're probably getting pretty used to that trick. I most definitely did not make it up but I use it all the time so dial down your opacity here so you just get kind of that reflected edge effect. I'm going to put a subtle drop shadow in here. I shouldn't say a subtle, um, but a shallow one because we're actually going to be adding a larger shadow with a different effect after the knob is done. So I'm, for this one I'm just going to go distance of two, size of probably two or three. Maybe we'll go up to three. And for this, I'm going to keep the opacity pretty high because you'll see the effect once I add the other shadow in there. Okay. I just cranked up the brightness of my screen and I want to drag this down a little more even, the inner shadow. Okay. So there's, the, oh, I want to add noise to this as well. So I'm going to do that with the inner glow again. Crank it up. Crank up the noise. Set the blend mode to normal. Set the color of the noise to white, and set the opacity to 2. And now I've added a little bit of noise to that, which in the case of a slider like this, a knob, it's really what you're trying to accomplish, or what I'm trying to accomplish, is to give it some texture so it looks sort of like, um, you know, that sort of aluminum brushed, well, it's not really brushed, but sort of the surface, like the surface of a Mac laptop or something, except black. So there's the base of my handle. I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to make an inner bevel. So knob, bevel. For now, I'm going to leave the styles on it, because I'm going to be using some of the same styles and just reversing a few things. I'm going to transform that. Hit Control-H to hide my guides so I can see what I'm doing. Link these two, make sure I'm looking at pixels, and scale that down to maybe around there. Now I'm going to go into the layer effects. I'm going to change my drop shadow now, because it's going to become a highlight. So I'm changing it to white, not dissolve. I don't know what dissolve is even for. I've never seen a, a use for it. Bring that down. Now, what, you'll see what's happening here. When I reverse this gradient, boom, we have a divot in our button. That's what we were going for. So now I can see that I need to bring this down even a little bit more. Um, my inner shadow is now going to be used as a more traditional inner shadow. Not a very extreme one, but uh, Probably about a distance of two and a size of two. And there you go. And you can see the difference there. It's it's very subtle. But 
it does add a little bit of dimension to the to the button. Um, inner glow is what's adding my noise. I'm going to leave that. So there now I have the the inner depressed part of my knob done. I'm going to duplicate it one more time, and this is going to be my LED indicator right in the middle of the knob. Here I'm going to clear the styles. And I'm going to change the color just so I can see it a little better, but this is not necessarily going to be the color that it's going to stay. So let's transform again. Hide our guides. Scale that down quite a bit. Probably almost. Yeah, I'll go that small. I like that. Now I'm going to add some styles to that. And I'm not going to make use of the color that I that I gave it. I'm going to do all my coloring with layer styles. So first I'll do the color overlay. We can stick with green, something greenish. And what I'm going to do is I want the color overlay to be the color of the brightest part of my LED. So I'm going to go with a real pale green and then I'm going to use satin to sort of make the darker part so you have sort of a hot spot in the middle. And I'm going to use some pretty extreme settings here. Got to get rid of that invert. Set my distance to about two and I'll try two, actually I think one. Uh, I don't want it to be black, I want it to be a darker shade of the green that we're using. i got to set that to normal so that it shows up. Set the opacity to 100. Okay, now I can see I need to bring it in a little bit more. There we go. So that's the effect I'm going for. It sort of looks like there's a little hot spot in the middle there. And we'll enhance that some more with some glows. Um, first, I'll do a, a real tight outer glow in a similar green to what we've been using. Set that to normal and bring it in even a little more, probably about three. Let's see if I pull the opacity all the way up there. Um, Set it to 4, pull the opacity back a tad. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to add an additional wider glow using the drop shadow. There again, same sort of green color. Angle doesn't really matter because we're setting the distance to 0. And I'm going to set the blend mode to either linear light or pin light, depending on what I like. But let's boost up the size here. And then I'm going to play with the spread a little bit, too. So I'll do this. Bring down the opacity just a tad. Let's see what it looks like with linear light as the blend mode. Yeah, pretty much the same. I'm going to stick with pin light. And there we go. So there's our glowing LED in the middle. I am going to add one more effect to that using just my brush tool, and I'll do that right now. I'm just going to add like a, a shimmer to it. So I'm going to make a new layer, a new pixel base layer. Call it something like Shimmer. I'm going to go over here and find a brush. I already have it set to this because I was playing around with it. Um, you've got, you should have in Photoshop built in some of these sort of sparkle brushes. I'm just going to be using one of these ones that's kind of like a cross that fades out. I have it set to 24 pixels. And then I'm the color should be white. I'm going to go right in here to the middle. And boom. Now of course I'm not going to leave it that big. I'm going to move it around a little bit. But I'm also going to add a mask to this so that it's not shooting out the same way on all sides. I'm going to zoom in 
And my little uh, hot spot that I made with the satin effect sort of travels this to, this way at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to have the long parts of our um, shimmer here actually go this way. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. Choose the gradient tool for your mask. Make sure your colors are set. You can just go to the black and white. You want to um, reflected. And I think I need it to be reversed as well. We'll find out here in a second. So I start here, hold down shift to lock to a 45 degree angle, pull it out to around here, and that's going to mask off the those wings, sort of, whatever you want to call them. Let's go back to full zoom here, and then bring the opacity of this thing way down. You could... Um, make it a green color if you wanted to, but because it's going to kind of blend with the glow I have on that LED, um, it's not necessary. So I like that right around there. It's it's really subtle, but it does add a little bit of a glimmer effect to the LED. So at this point, I'm done with uh, both the, the empty slot and the knob. Next, I have to make a active slot, which is the slot that looks like it has, you know, it's been filled in with a color. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.